DIY food photography background. What's up YouTube and welcome or welcome back to my channel. On this channel we talk about everything to do with food and drink photography. If that interests you, click subscribe down below. It's been a really long time since I've done a DIY background video and you guys really like them and I really love making them because there's nothing better than new backgrounds. I thought this summer drink series is really lacking a DIY background video so I decided to create a nice summery background for the series. Here is the background that I created so if you're interested in how I created this so you can make some more make some yourself then definitely stay tuned. I went for quite a wacky orange colour which obviously you can do this any colour you want to but I thought it kind of gave the feeling of warm and sand and I have a shoe in mind for it so stay tuned for that. First of all I'm going to talk about exactly what I used for this background so if you do want to make one yourself you know exactly what to go out and buy from the shops. I'll leave links to similar products in the description below as well but you can also go ahead and buy them from sort of home DIY shops that are near you. First things first you're going to need the background. I use the other side of a background I've already made so you can when you buy these boards you can get two backgrounds out of one board. Size wise I'd normally go for about three by two feet or three by four feet something around that size. For the texture I use some joint compound so this is a Mahuzi tub you do not need one more than this. This has done me upwards of 10 boards and it is barely even taken a dint out of it. To apply the compound, you're going to need something like this. It's a, like a palette knife. You can get them in different sizes and the different sizes are gonna give you more or less texture. For the paint, I always go to shops and find little tester pots. These are a really great way of making these backgrounds a little bit cheaper. For this background, I used a sort of burnt orange color and a much lighter orange colour. I did get a few different tones but these are the two that I stuck with. Like I mentioned you can get whatever colours you want for your background. When looking for your paints you need to make sure they're a matte finish because you don't want your board to have a gloss finish. That is going to cause all sorts of crazy reflections. To apply the paint for this board I used a sea sponge and I actually did get this one off Amazon. This is really great. This is a really great way of applying the paint to give it a lot of texture and a really interesting pattern. And last but not least, matte sealer. So again, I got this one off of Amazon. This is going to seal the board, but not give it a shiny finish. We're almost ready to get started. But before we go ahead, I want to mention that if you can do this outside, great. If like me, you're stuck indoors because of the rain, make sure you open the windows and create a nice, well ventilated area. Some of the chemicals you're working with are probably not great to breathe in for hours in a day. Also, remember to get in something nice and scruffy so you don't mind it getting messy. Now it's time to get everything set up. If you're doing this indoors like me, I would definitely recommend getting a sheet for the floor just to protect any flooring or carpet. And get everything ready so it's all on hand. What we're going to start with is the joint compound. This is what's going to give us a really nice rough texture to our boards, which adds a lot of interest when photographing food or drinks on them. Just start with a nice healthy dollop onto the board and with your palette knife, drag it across. For this board, I didn't want it to be too crazy with the texture unlike my white board that I created. If you want to see something with a lot more texture, check out this video. Using the palette knife, I gradually covered the whole board with the joint compound. I went in one direction to make sure it was a nice and smooth look. Now the board is completely covered, I'm going to get a paper or a plastic bag. This might seem really strange, but just wait, it's going to look great. Place the paper onto the joint compound and pull it off. As you can see, this is giving it a really speckled effect and the texture is completely different to what the palette knife gives you. You can either do this all over or in small areas. If you don't want to use a paper because it takes quite a while, you can also use a plastic bag. They also give slightly different textures. You can experiment with how it looks if you just place it on it or if you place it on it and then drag it around to sort of flatten it a bit if you don't want it really spiky. This is a great way of adding some smaller sort of textured areas and it really adds a lot of interest to the board. 
Now we have our joint compound covering the whole of our board, it's time to leave it to dry. And yes, I know it's so boring sat waiting for it, but I really would recommend leaving it for about 24 hours for it to be fully, fully dry. It can be very tempting to skip ahead and just start with the painting, but you're just going to create sloppy mess because the joint compound is just going to mix in with the paint and it's not going to be great. Now we've waited patiently and our joint compound is fully dry it's time to get on to the fun part the painting. Because this is for the drinks it's for summer drink series I wanted it to have a sort of sandy summery vibe so I've picked some really vibrant oranges and yellows. I also wanted a slightly lighter colour than what I had here so I mixed the colours up with some white to create a much brighter colour than the ones I had picked. Adding white or black is a really great way of getting different tones of the same colour. Now we have the colours that we wanted to use, I'm just going to go with the three I've created here. So the darker one, the medium one and the lighter one that's mixed with the white. Apply them all over the board, considering exactly where you want them. So if you want a darker outside area, apply more dark around the outside and more lighter colours into the middle. Make sure you get a nice even spread of paint so we're not going to run out of areas too quickly with no paint. Using the sea sponge, I dab the paint into the board, mixing it up slightly as it goes. I just use like a, a dabbing motion, it can take quite a while to cover the whole board. The sponge is giving a really interesting speckly effect, which I absolutely love. Just like the paper bag did with the texture, but now we're getting it on top of that with the paint. We want to keep going with this until we make sure our board is completely covered. You may find you need to add some extra paint to some areas, which is absolutely fine. Now that it's completely covered, we need to leave it to dry again. I know this is boring, but lots of waiting around. Ideally, again, we'd leave this for a day just to make sure it's definitely dry. And I know it can be tempted to, just to start changing things up while it's still wet, but you're just gonna mix, start mixing the paints in too much, so you're not really gonna see any changes in the tone. And also, you might find it dry slightly lighter or slightly darker, depending on what colors you're going with. So it might look completely different when it's dry, so sometimes it's best to gonna go away and get a fresh pair of eyes on it the next day. Now our paint is dry, you may find you want to do an extra coat. If you don't and you think your board is fine, then great, you can skip this step. I, on the other hand, found felt my board was a little bit too dark. We are going for a bright summery feeling. So I added some more lighter tones, especially in the middle of the board. So the second coat, all I did was added a few lighter tones to the middle and kind of spread them a little bit. After doing this, I thought my board was looking great. Sometimes we're a bit unsure about our boards. We think we like them, but then we also think we might not. And if that's the case with you, take it for a test run before you seal it. See how it looks on camera because sometimes it can be completely different to what your eye is seeing. And we can easily get stuck in a trap of keep wanting to change something and change for it. And you're kind of trying to make it perfect and sometimes it's just never going to be perfect. But it might look absolutely brilliant on camera. Now our board is ready and that second coat or third coat, you can add as many coats as you want is fully dry, it's time to seal it. This is a really simple step. All you need to do is take the matte sealer. Usually says on the bottle, but about, about, loud. About 10 to 15 centimeters away from it. Just give it a nice even coat. I usually give this about two to three coats, making sure you let it dry fully in between. You can do it more or less, it's completely up to you, but just want to give it a really good coat so you can wipe away some, some spills on there. This is not a miracle worker though, so if you're sat shooting beetroot on your background, you're probably not going to be able to just wipe it away. So be extra careful with things that stain easily. If you followed along with me, our boards are now finished. That is exactly how I created my summery, sandy coloured photography board. If you're interested in exactly how this looks in a shoot, watch next week's video, but I'm going to be shooting some pina coladas on this board. Don't get more summary than that. If you like this video, but you think this is maybe a bit too advanced for you, check out this super easy DIY background here, which is so easy. It's got like two, three steps. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.